One of the very first desserts I made on the show was the Milk Bar Pie, formerly the Crack Pie. They have changed the name. When I made this thing, I had just found out who Christina Tozzi was the day before, what Milk Bar was, literally just found out. So I made the pie and I was never really thrilled with how it turned out because there was a lot of things that I did wrong. And well, this is a show uh, of redemption and I would like to fix a wrong because well, it's one of my most watched videos and it's really never sat well with me how I made this thing. So please give me another shot, another chance to redeem myself. Let's make the Milk Bar Pie. So I've made a bunch of Milk Bar things and honestly, like you start reading the recipes and it's just like page after page of things to do. And you look at this one today and there's not a whole lot going on. Uh, dare I say a cakewalk. There's two parts to this. There's the oat cookie crust, which is the pie crust, and then the milk bar pie filling. That's it. So I start asking myself, where the hell did things go wrong last time? I just didn't know, and now I know. So let me get the stuff. For the, we're gonna get the stuff for the, the crust first, and then we'll go from there. <laughs> 115 grams of room temperature butter, 75 grams of light brown sugar, 40 grams of granulated sugar, a lone egg yolk, a little bit of salt and baking powder, 120 grams of rolled oats, 80 grams of all purpose flour, which I forgot to add into my pie last time I made this. I didn't put the flour into the pie. I don't think it's gonna turn out. Uh, I'm not gonna forget this time. I will not. Okay, you make sure that you're all covered up. Everything's good, everything's great. Okay, first things first, I have to heat up the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's go over here. Step number two. Oh. Everybody clear a path. In your favorite and only stand mixer you have, combine the butter and the sugars. In my pocket, I have the paddle attachment. You go down, cream this together, two to three minutes, medium high. We're gonna mix that until it's fluffy and pale looking. Um, am I supposed to turn this off? On low speed. So while it's still running, don't turn it off. Uh, I'm gonna add my egg yolk. Go, you're free, you're free. So I'm gonna increase this to medium high and I'm gonna beat it for an additional two minutes uh, once the egg yolk's in there, which it is. Yeah. However, do not forget to scrape down the sides of the bowl. So on low speed, I'm gonna add all the dry ingredients, all of them. Flour, the oats, the salt and the baking powder. Yeah, till it's completely combined. Okay, now this dough should be fluffier than your ordinary cookie dough. I don't know, is it? Sure. With a quarter sheet pan, quarter sheet line. Okay, so, so I'm gonna grease it up with this butter thing. Thank you. Wipe your hand off from the grease. Go back over here to my quiet area. And I need, uh, that is cling wrap. Parchment paper, you need parchment paper. Exactly. Plop this stuff down into the middle of the pan and I need to flatten it until it's a quarter inch thick in here. The dough won't end up covering the entire pan. Good. Yeah, that's about a quarter inch thickness. Yeah, give or take. So I'm gonna bake this for like 15 minutes. This has got to be slightly puffy, but firm. So the ridiculousness of this next part, which is the milk bar pie filling. I mean, get a load of what I'm using. It's crazy. It's crazy. Firstly, 300 grams of granulated sugar. If that wasn't enough, 180 grams of brown sugar. That's 480 grams of sugar right there. 225 grams of butter, which I'm gonna have to melt. 160 grams of heavy cream, eight egg yolks, 20 grams of dry milk powder, half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, half a teaspoon of salt, 24 grams of corn powder, which is like the secret ingredient for 
for a number of Milk Bar recipes. And last time I made this, uh, I completely just ignored this part of it because I didn't know what it was and I figured that no one would notice. Uh, it turns out people noticed. You gotta order this like special, right? Either from their website, Milk Bar website, or you get it off like Amazon, which is called freeze dried corn. And this is just the corn powder from that freeze dried corn. You just blend this up. I've done it before, yada yada. Okay, so mise en place is great and all, but it really just gets in your way. Um, even that elastic, no, don't do that. First, I need to separate my eggs and the recipe really stresses how important it is to make sure that there is no egg whites on the egg yolks. It will be the death of your wildly dense pie filling if there's any bit of egg white in the mixture. So you will need a couple bowls. My personal preference is using my hands to do this stuff because I find I'm the one in control. Um, I mean, oh, there's still a little egg yolk. Get off. The eight egg yolks. A lot of eggs. I have to find something to do with the leftover egg whites because it's, uh, it's hefty. Last time I made this recipe, uh, I didn't have a stand mixer. I don't even think I really knew what a stand mixer was. All I had was the, um, the hand mixer, uh, as she calls it a granny hand mixer. Now the recipe stresses that I must use a stand mixer. So it's a really good thing that I have one. Combine the sugar, brown sugar, milk powder, corn powder, salt, and bowl of stand mixer. Once again, using the paddle attachment, the sugar, the brown sugar, the milk powder, the corn powder, and the salt. So I'm gonna mix this on low until it's evenly combined. The brown sugar is all kind of clumpy. Ugh. Ay. The brown sugar is clumpy, but whatever. Add the melted butter two, three minutes. Scrape down the sides of your bowl. Half a teaspoon of vanilla and the heavy, this should be running, and the heavy cream. Two to three minutes until all the white streaks in the cream are gone. Scrape down the side of the bowl, which is the moral of today. So I'm gonna add the egg yolks one at a time. So these gotta be glossy and homogenous. Okay, I'm happy with that. Glossy and homogenous and really just a beautiful thing. So you can go back to the... shocked me again. It's my fault. My hands are a bit wet, but come on. Put the oat cookie in your food processor or of course your blender. Uh, try some of it out too. I do really wish I had a food processor, so I'm gonna have to just kind of figure this out. So one tablespoon of brown sugar and a quarter teaspoon of salt. That's way more than that. I'm gonna blitz this up until it's like a sand-like consistency. Okay, this method kind of sucks. Okay, screw the blender. I'm just gonna do it by hand. I would check to see what I did last time I made this recipe. Why don't I do that? So last time I just did this with my hands. I do honestly do not remember doing that. It was, this is more painful. Rolling pin with the crumbs, that is the way to do it. A sand-like consistency. Add some melted butter. Oh my God, right? Yes? Yeah, I was supposed to do that. All right, knead it all together until it's moist enough to form into a ball. Divide between two pie tins. I had no, <laughs> so divide between two pie tins, two of them. I didn't know I was making two pies. I thought I was just making one. Well then, well, I'll focus on one pie and then We'll see if I need a second. Do I need to butter up the pie dish? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. 
I'm not going to. I guess if you're making this at home, just divide every single thing that I've done in half because I don't know why you'd need two of these things. But if you do, then just follow along. So I'm gonna press firmly down, get this pie crust all up in this pie dish, making sure the bottom and the sides are evenly covered. Adding the filling, it needs to be about three quarters of the way up uh, the pie crust. Which is cool with me, man. With everything that's uh, left, I don't know if there's enough to make a second pie, maybe just like a little mini, mini me pie. There's like some complicated steps that I don't feel like reading. Right? So I'm gonna bake this initially for 15 minutes and then there's something that I gotta do after that. So 15 minutes first and foremost. So we got a mess on our hand. How the hell did that get down there? Okay, so the pie needs to be jiggly in the bullseye center and not around the edges. What I need to do is open the oven door and turn the temperature down to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, but that may take five minutes. So you just leave that in the oven uh, while it's cooling down. Five minutes? Yeah. Oh, to there. Okay, that did not take five minutes. That took like 20 seconds. So now that the oven temperature, are you getting all this? The oven temperature is at 325 degrees Fahrenheit, 160 degrees Celsius, and now you bake that for another five minutes. What? I don't even know what's going on anymore. Why that's so complicated, I have no idea. So, now I gotta check to see the jiggly, if this is too jiggly. So there's a massive jiggle going on in that pie, so I'm just gonna let it stay in the oven for like another five minutes. So the pie is finally out of the oven. I'm gonna let it hang out on this rack for three hours, and then I'm gonna put it in the freezer overnight. It's gotta get dense. Denser than it's already dense. It's dense, it needs to be dense. Freezing the pie, is the signature technique and the result of a perfectly executed milk bar pie. That's a first. I literally just like cleaned the floors, so I think this should be okay. It's five second rule. It fell, um, fell the right side up, so I think it's okay to continue to eat. Don't judge me. So I was skeptical at first, because I was just looking at the pie, and I was like, hey, I've kind of made this before. Why the hell am I making it again? Then I take a bite. And I haven't made that. Wow, uh, I'm in like some comatose stay right now. Oh, it hits you hard, it slaps you in the face and straight to the gut. Uh, this is one of the best things I've made. This is one of the best things I've made from Milk Bar, uh, if not the best. Uh, I know, I'm as surprised as you are, but when I first made this thing, I was a bit, uh, well, I was a bit surprised with how popular it was based on what I had made, which was kind of a, a very dense, which it is, but very like, it was tougher to bite through. And then I went to an actual milk bar and I had this pie and I was like, oh, I get it now. It's so perfect. You bite through it, it's soft, and it's just loaded with sugar. <laughs> Long story short, this tastes like uh, an actual milk bar pie. That's an end to, to that. Um, I'm not gonna make it again because it's honestly the most unhealthy thing I've ever had in my entire life. It's worth it for that one bite. But now I gotta go exercise. So if you're interested in supporting the show after this episode, there's a couple ways to do so. There's a whole bunch of different links in the description. One will take you to Patreon, which is a way to donate to the show on a monthly basis. That's what these people up on the screen are doing and it's helping out in a big way. So if you're interested in that, as well as a link for the t-shirts here, I got a whole bunch of new colors and 
different variations of this. All those links are in the description and they all go towards supporting the show. So if you're interested in that, definitely check it out. And uh, I have Instagram and I would definitely like to see you over there. Uh, we can be Instagram friends and we can say hi and blah, blah, blah. I'll see you guys soon, bye.